Welcome to Pips of Profit, my name's Cameron, and after my last few videos, I realized I need to present this information in a completely different way. So in this video, I'm going through categorically and step by step so that anybody watching is going to understand. I promise you by the end of this video, you'll understand every aspect of my trading style, the trading setups, to the time of day, to the day count, all of it. Please leave anything you have to say in the comments below, like and subscribe, and enjoy this video. All right, step one identifying the day. The three-day cycle. I'm going to explain exactly what the three-day cycle is in the next slide, but what day as far as the three-day cycle are we in one, two, or three? What day is it for the previous day's breakout levels? Has the previous day high been hit twice? Has the previous day's low been hit twice? Was there a trigger day and has there been a reset? My three triggers are two or three days of previous day's level, either the high or the low being hit, uh, first green day or first red day, or inside day. And if one of those days hasn't happened on the previous day, then on the current day, I'm not looking in that pair at all. What is the three day cycle? And how do I find day one? Finding day one is probably the most important part because you have to identify day one to be able to identify day two and three. So the rules for finding day one are that day one is identified by a false break at the high or low of the week where the breakout has failed and pulled back inside of the previous day's range. There's a few different variations of that and I'm going to show you those in the next three slides. But the three day cycle is used to identify larger trade setups where risk to reward is much higher than small scalps. All right, variation one, previous days low, previous days high. That is the gray lines, that's what those represent. And then you can see that it's a Monday where they've hit the high of the week and ripped it back inside. So the breakout has failed at the high of the week at the previous highs level and then close at the lows. So this is day one, and then this is day two because this is day one. And then on day three, you can see obviously that this has been working the low and there's a larger risk to reward trade setup on that day three. Second variation, again, you can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now it's not always gonna be day one, day two, day three on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's just how it's kind of happened on these variations. But for this example, you can see Monday traded below the previous day's low, and then on that following day, on Tuesday, reversed. This is what I was saying, there's subtle variations where they've broken through the previous day's low and then reversed on Tuesday. The breakout still failed on Monday. So Monday is day one, Tuesday is then day two, and then day three would be Wednesday. And then this is the third variation where there's a reset where the market is in an up move and they've hit the previous day's high and then closed lower than the previous day's high. But then on the following day, they continue going higher. So that would be day one on this Thursday, day two on the day that they continued higher, and then day three is obviously the day after. So the trigger days are the day prior to the one you're actually trading in. And this day is gonna be either a two to three days of previous day's level being hit, a first red or a first green day, or it's gonna be an inside day. A first red day is a day that it has a very strong pumping day. And then the day after that would be the first red day. And then you're looking for the trade on the current day where you're expecting the market to do a certain thing and it's gonna dump. Or a first green day where it's had a dump day and then the day prior was a first green day. And then the day you're actually trading in now is the day that you expect the market to reverse. And then an inside day is a day where neither the previous day high or low has been hit, which is kind of a, a coil in the market or a spring where if the day that you're actually trading in was to hit the previous day's high or low, it could maybe either false break and go to the other side of the range, which gives really good risk to reward, or it could break out and then pull back and then continue for a trend trade. Second step in the trading process, narrowing it down. Analysis paralysis is a real thing. If you've got 20 charts up on your screen, there's a very good chance you're gonna get confused and you're gonna either miss trades or you're gonna take the wrong trade. This trading system allows you to narrow things down to one to three assets, currency, index, uh, forex pair, whatever it is, and hone in on only those three. That way you can actually take the appropriate trade. Or you can narrow it down to zero and just not trade today because nothing is meeting your criteria, so why would you trade something that isn't your setup? Step three, identifying trade setups and their parameters. You should always be saying to yourself, I'm waiting for the setup to complete the pattern or the trade setup has already completed the pattern and it's moving in the direction that it should and I only wanna trade in that direction. And then what should the setup do prior to completing the pattern? Is it behaving that way? Are you completely wrong? Has it done something completely outlandish that you never would have expected? Is there news on the calendar? If yes, what time is the news? 
Could the news be the thing that completes the pattern? And you should just enter in after the news. And the only trade setups that I'm looking for are short squeezes, I'm looking for trend trades, I'm looking for three days of movement in one direction where they break trend line, traps up high, and then dump it in a different direction. Or in the reverse, they dump the market, trend line break, trap down low, and then shift the market in the opposite direction. Step four is my entry criteria. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I mean by that on the next slide, but I just wanted to tell you that you should be making these, if the market does this, then I will do the statements. What I mean by that is, if the market does this, I will take an entry. If the market engulfs this candle, I will take an entry. If the market pulls back in three pushes and doesn't go in the direction that I want, I'm gonna get out of the trade because it could be reversing. Just those kind of statements. And then my actual step-by-step -step entry criteria. The previous day for step one has been a trigger day. And then step two, the current day's price action is behaving according to the setup that you think is going to happen. And then as far as getting into the trade, I'm looking for a high or a low to be formed. The market needs to trade back into that level in three pushes. And there's different variations of these pushes or breaks out of an area and has pushed back up into the area or down into the area in three pushes. And that is more of like a trend style trade. Some type of chart pattern is formed, such as an M, a W, or a head and shoulders. Now, if there's a breakout and a pullback, I'm still looking for a micro M or some kind of chart pattern in an engulfment in the direction that I plan on going. And then that brings me to number six, which is a candle has engulfed that chart pattern to complete the pattern because I'm looking for things to complete the pattern before I enter because I'm not trying to enter a market off of what I want to happen or what I think is going to happen. I'm entering in off of what is happening currently. I'm looking to enter at a certain time of day for my first entry. A pen hammer could be my second entry and then a pen hammer getting engulfed would be like the third entry. I'm walking you through the trade criteria. This was a downwards moving market on oil. They had come off of the low of the day over 150 pips, and I was looking for a reason to go short. Trend line, I don't trade the breaks, but if I'm looking for a reason to go short, I need a high to be formed, and we are now trading back up into that high at a specific time of the day. I'm looking for a price pattern. I'm looking for an engulfing candle. What is my price pattern? There is a head and shoulders that I see forming, and I'm waiting for it to finish. Smaller consolidation up high, time of day wise, this is the nine o'clock candle. Attempts to make a higher high, fails, reverses aggressively, engulfs, that is the entry right there. And then on top of that, there's a pen hammer immediately after that. Based off of the trade criteria that I use every day, this was perfect. Time of day, there's 24 hours in a day, which one should I be trading? Well, it really depends on you. If the Asian session's best, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time might be for you. If you're a London trader, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., New York Eastern Standard Time might be for you. Me, I trade New York Session, so I trade from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. But that's not all there is to it because there's other times within those time frames. For example, in New York, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., the 9.30 New York Open, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. There's trades that happen around those times all the time. You just have to be able to identify the pattern know exactly which trade setup that you're looking and knowing if it's behaving the way it should. Has the pattern completed? Has the pattern even formed? These are things that are gonna keep you from getting in too early, getting in too late, missing trades, or just getting into some nonsense trade that you shouldn't even be taking. And additionally, just a little tip or an additive to this timing piece. If you're coming into a new hour, let's say we're going into the nine o'clock hour, and there is a consolidation that is formed and nine o'clock opens up, which is the new four hour candle. And they burst through the top of the consolidation or the bottom. And then the next candle on a one minute chart pulls right back inside and engulfs the previous candle. That happens more often than you think. And I consider that a false break. This is what I'm talking about with timing. Nine o'clock is important. Eight o'clock is important. 9.30 is important. 10 is important. And yep, exactly what I was just saying. So the if you're in the middle of the hour and the it doesn't even seem to make sense because the new hour hasn't opened up, you're just in the middle of the chart, some kind of pattern is formed and you're like, that looks really good. A lot of times it's a trap, be careful, make sure you're using good risk management. I don't even bother, I just wait for the times. Nine o'clock is that candle right there, this big candle that comes straight down. One, two, three, and it doesn't go anywhere. There's no follow through. Puts in a middle structure, engulfs the middle structure, pulls back, You've got a W at the low of the day, an engulfment, and then this 
being like a little down, up, down, and golf. There's a micro W. So if you're not in down here, maybe looking to take entries. Hopefully the information in the video has been useful. Hit that like button and subscribe. You'll have a wonderful day.